With the new model dropping next month, why the heck are we revisiting the one-year-old Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 now? Why should you care? Why are we even doing this? Well, give me the next few minutes of your time and I'll try to explain in more detail. But TLDR, it has something to do with the merely marginal improvements of the new one over its older sibling. And the other huge thing is price. For a little bit more than what you pay for a Pixel 6, which will be guest starring in this episode, you can snag yourself, in my mind, one of the coolest phones to come out since the Nokia 3110. Remember that thing? And it's not just me saying this, guys. People around the world have made the Flip 3 by far the biggest selling foldable phone in the last 365 days. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how this phone fares in these 10 categories and then I'll score it at the end and then we'll see if the Flip 3 is a flip or a flop. Let's do it. Looking at these strictly as phones for straight up making phone calls, either one would do the job just fine. Voice quality is excellent, except on the Google, the signal strength might not be as strong or good as the Samsung's. But let's not forget Google's strengths here lie in its tensor powered AI and accessibility functions to the point it can almost, almost anticipate what you need when you're making or receiving phone calls. It's pretty darn freaky for those of you who have experienced it, but awesome at the same time. Other brands like the Samsung still can't come close to this kind of functionality. All right, we're down almost by the roadside here to get some sound samples. How does this handle noise cancellation? Testing, testing. One, two, three. Voice clarity is spot on. Uh, there is some noise cancellation. It nullifies a little bit of the harsh, you know, tire slaps on the road right now. So uh, you can hear for yourselves. What do you think about this? You know, if Samsung had ported their camera package from the S21 or even the S20 Ultra, the Flip 3 would have been a killer in the camera department. But instead, it carried over hardware that has its roots from the S9 and S10, believe it or not. That's not to say that the results, as you will see in a second, are bad. Far from it, guys. But if you want to have the best at the mobile photography game, the Pixel 6 series is it. And I understand that Samsung wanted to keep the whole phone thin and all, which means the latest hardware would have messed with these lines, but it does make you wonder, isn't it? What if? And the next version is not going to be any better, so I hope the Flip 5 would be awesome. Now, that being said, where the hardware could have been better, with the whole form factor of the Flip 3 combined with the cover screen over here, Samsung managed to make this one of the most unique and very practical video and photo shooting platforms out there. And I'll talk more about this later on in the screen section, but in the meantime, guys, let's hit up some samples. So we have the Pixel 6 and the Flip 3 running with screen recording as well as the final file. And you can see in the preview right here that it seems like the stabilization in the preview screen, especially when we're panning like this, there is tearing on the Pixel 6 and it's really smooth on the Samsung. It's really nice. But once we get in motion, let's see. Uh, stabilization, you can see it's way more stable on the Pixel 6 than it is on the Flip 3 as I'm running through this little small part of my backyard. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Let me try, try to flip the cameras now too and let's do this here. So we switched over to the selfie cam and you can see that the stabilization is, on a preview anyway, is a little bit uh, inferior on the Pixel more stable on the Samsung and the final you can be your own judge of how uh, good either of these cameras are in terms of stable whoa it's really low tight right now let me switch over to the other camera and see let's stop this and go and we'll switch over to this one and then switch over to that one it's really low tide in it. So you can see also the saturation right now. It's kind of bright in the in the real world. And the Pixel is pushing a little bit more blue while the Samsung, of course, is pushing it a little bit warmer. But it is slightly more natural on the Pixel for the tree while the Samsung slightly overexposes it. Although the brown, I find it a little bit more pleasing. I'm not sure. <laughs> Why here but yeah it's definitely more blue uh, than it actually is on the pixel and the Samsung is more realistic now the water in the ground 
I would say the Pixel is more realistic. So, you know, it's a wash kind of, you know, depends on the algorithm and what kind of uh, color setup they have here. Let's point this at the sun and look at uh, any kind of lens flaring. Wow, there's this weird uh, horizontal line on the uh, Samsung in it. The Google keeps it in control. How's that? So here we have the final file for the tree overlooking the Penobscot River. You can see how the color processing is and differs from both of these units. And right now you can hear the wind is blustering, blowing hard right in my face. And as I switch between the two mics, you can hear how or which do you prefer. Actually, comment down below which of these mics sound better to your ears. There kids also running through the park down behind the trees there. I'm not sure if you can hear it. It's going to be quiet there for a second. Do you hear them? I'm not sure if these mics will pick it up anyways, but uh, it is what it is. Now, when it comes to photographs, here we are, the main cam. The Pixel is showing a one-time zoom and the Samsung, same thing. And you can see, I think the Pixel fits a little bit more in the frame uh, on the tree itself. And then if we zoom out to 0.7 or zoom back to 0.7 on the uh, Pixel and then the Samsung is half times, the Samsung actually picks up a lot more of the tree. So that changes quite a bit there. And in terms of two-time zoom, Let's see what the difference here is. Um, again, we have, it seems like we have a little bit more of, of the tree in the Samsung. So it pushes in a little bit more. So take it for what it is. I'm going to snap a shot right here so you can we can compare it side by side in terms of quality. Um, and let's do portrait mode here too. Or selfie mode and you can see in one time zoom regular as uh, this regular zoom the Samsung seems to say oh I just lifted my hand it's gonna take a picture every time you lift a hand um, that's pretty cool I like that so uh, in regular mode you can see that the pixel picks up more of my body than the Samsung itself and you still can push out you can push in a little bit more 1.4 times and now in the Pixel, it's quite similar to the Samsung. The Samsung, if I pull out a little bit more for a uh, wide angle, they're quite similar again. So it's just a difference. There it is again. It took a picture. You can do the same with saying cheese. Cheese. Oh, I didn't want to do that that time. Uh, but it's just interesting how both the uh, Samsung and Pixel do or, you know, describe their uh, scenes differently, like wide, wide angle versus normal. So it's kind of reverse on both of these. The camera may be older Samsung tech, but thankfully the chipset running the show in the background is or was the top of the line Snapdragon 888 with eight gigs of RAM. And to be honest, that's more than what most users need nowadays anyways. 
So performance is a smooth stutter-free affair from swiping between screens and running split-screen apps to using the feature-rich camera app and multitasking. The Flip 3 hums away with just a hint of warmth in the back panel. The Pixel 6, on the other hand, with its technically slower Tensor chipset, surprisingly operates just as smoothly while running rings around the Samsung in anything AI-related, but with noticeably more heat, especially when running resource-heavy apps or games. Now, comparing the two phones side by side like running the super demanding Diablo Immortal, I've experienced during like say heavy co-op dungeon battles, the Flip 3 quite literally flipping out, stuttering and then crashing on two occasions. In the same scenario, the Pixel 6 would stutter but never throttles as bad as the Samsung, let alone had any kind of crashes whatsoever. As you can probably see here, the Flip 3 is narrower, thinner, and taller than the Pixel 6, and for that matter, pretty much every average phone on sale. This sort of screen aspect ratio of 22 to 9 is rare, and it has this more candy bar slender shape that one, makes it great for those of you who have smaller hands, or those of you who prefer to have your thumbs be able to reach both edges of the screen, this thing can do it. And two, the added height gives it more room to multitask when you have to split apps onto both displays. Now, the added height does make it a little bit more of a stretch for your thumbs to get to things at the top, so something to bear in mind. And of course, how can you talk about design and not talk about its bloody namesake in it? This thing is normal looking one second and then boom, you have this. And to be honest though, in and of itself, it's a really kind of a pointless form factor. So unless you have a shallow pocket or purse, it's really harder to fish out than I'm used to with a regular slab phone. Opening it up is also not a one-handed event either. It's usually two hands, which means you can't just pull it out of your pocket and start using it right away. But, but, hear me out here. In a landscape of samey looking slab phones that everyone has, taking this out of your pocket or just having this sitting on your table with the screen bent elicits like oohs and ahs from strangers almost everywhere you go. It's also the perfect party trick with kids or people who have never realized such a thing like this exists. In most people's minds, to be honest, this is a flip phone, not this. So it floors them every single time. Which brings me to three things I want to say about the display, or rather displays. First, the same hinge design that makes people go ooh and ah. Well, wait until you bend the screen, lay this on the table, use this as a tripod for your Skype or Zoom calls or TikToks, and then look at their reactions. They're like, did that just happen? Second, the main display, man, it's fantastic. Deep blacks, vibrant colors, customizable, smooth with that 120 hertz refresh rate, and a champion at outdoor direct sunlight viewing. The Pixel 6 can't even touch it in that department. And thirdly, the cover screen is not some cheap LCD display afterthought. It's an OLED, and it's most practical when used as a viewfinder if you decide to use the primary camera to take selfies or something like that. Or for your subjects to compose themselves if you're the one taking pictures with the main display, kind of like a mirror. Oh, another thing about the main display too, I kind of prefer this 22 by 9 ratio, especially when you watch similar size content. It's so much more immersive. VR would be so awesome on this. And I guess that makes it four things I was going to talk about the screens. It is not all roses though. The primary display that's so awesome in bright daylight is horribly bright even in the dark at its lower setting, in my opinion anyway. And I know you can go into the settings, into power saving and take it down 10% more or so like that. But I'm talking about straight out of the box from the notification bar, it's minimal setting. What does it compare to the Pixel 6? This thing wins right there. And I also wish that the cover screen had a light sensor because as it is, you have to dig into the settings yet again, just to change it whenever you transition from outdoors to indoors. Plus, I hope that Samsung can convince more app developers to create more useful and powerful lower screen functions, because right now, they're just too bare bones and mostly useless. And the thing is, there's just so much potential here, guys, with that lower screen function, so it would be great to see this change as foldables gain more market share, say, over the next year or two. The fact that you can drop the Flip 3 in dirt or sand and then use it up to one and a half meters underwater for half an hour at a time is a thumbs up in my book, especially for a foldable. And I'll tell you what, lots of hours and tears and blood and possibly broken marriages went into making this folding mechanism what it is, a well-engineered piece of kit. You can pretty much prop this at any angle up to like say 175 degrees before gravity takes over for that ideal viewing position. 
If you have arthritis or carpal tunnel, this might also be the screen for you. You don't have to rely on it, rely on your wrist to you know, get the right angle. You just have to bend it as you need it. If you're curious also about how strong this folding assembly is on a daily basis, um, earlier this June, and I'll link it up above here, Mr. Keybird, he live streamed himself subjecting this phone to 418,000 folds before failure. In real world terms, that's equivalent to more than 19 years of use. And that's based on the average number of times people check their phones. I think it was like 56 times per day. And in terms of faults, there's a known issue of the display panel separating from the hinge. And the most common culprit, as far as I can tell, for, for this is the dirt or dirt getting under the uh, pre-installed screen protector right here at the hinge and eventually causing problems. But these are rare. And if you clean your phone from time to time, especially right here in the corners, it shouldn't be a problem. Another thing too, and this applies to all glass back phones, the Pixel 6 included, is these phones will walk away from you if you put them on anything remotely smooth. So holding this and using this one-handed, the Flip 3, I can tell you what, I'm always scared of dropping it. It's so svelte and uh, slippery. Thank goodness they make uh, Aramid cases or Kevlar cases that are only 0.5 millimeters thick, so it preserves the profile like this one from Getron. And it adds the much needed grip and also besides the obvious color, it's like it's not even there. Check this out. Even though this doesn't have the latest ultrasonic type fingerprint sensor, the side mounted capacitive version on this is, I'll tell you, flipping lightning fast. It's almost telepathic in how it operates. Unfortunately though, the half uh, fold does force the sensor to be mounted like a smidge higher than I'll prefer. But once you get used to the whole thing, the size and the grip method, it's almost as easy to reach as any other phone. Another thing, even though the sensor is mounted on the right side, I myself as a lefty have no problems whatsoever in case you're wondering. Uh, still, between the location and the height of the sensor and all on this phone, I found that the most uh, fluid and quickest unlock action, if you have your phone in open position and want to pick it up, is to have the screen facing down like this, and by the time you flip the display to face you, the sensor has already done its job, boom, unlocked. Let's get this out of the way. Specs wise, the Samsung isn't gonna win any awards for charging speeds anytime soon. 15 watts wired, 10 watts wireless, yeah, definitely slow for something only a year old. But guys, in the big scheme of things, it's really not half bad. It takes about one and a half hours to charge from zero to hero. In comparison, the Pixel 6 theoretically charges twice as fast, going from empty to full about 20 minutes longer than the Samsung. And that's only because this has a larger battery cell. Which brings me, of course, to battery life. If there is one kink in this flippin' armor, it would be battery anxiety. For example, running a looped video over Wi-Fi at max volume, max brightness, the Pixel 6 knocked out 11 hours, 47 minutes, while the Flip 3 gave up the ghost and got this 7 hours, 43 minutes. But bear this in mind, the brightness of the screen was almost twice as much at 900 nits compared to the 500 on the Pixel. In real world usage though, on average use, the 6 can get you almost a day and a half, almost, of use, whereas the Flip 3, well, let's just say you'd be lucky to make it to bedtime before needing to refuel. In the last 365 days, the test bench here at Gear Up has been fortunate enough to have made quite a few firsts in terms of types of tech reviews. In the last 365 days, the test bench here at Gear Up has been fortunate enough to have made quite a few firsts in terms of types of tech reviews. One UI, as many of us may know, is Samsung's vision of what Android should be. And I've gone into some detail before about Samsung's OS and its metamorphosis from TouchWiz best name ever, to 4.0 and now 4.1. But in short, if you like to customize and have more control of Android itself, One UI does it better than most other big brands out there. If you like Android 12 as it's meant to be, clean, you know, with some elements of customization, then the Pixel series is the best. Now, in other Samsungs besides the Fold 3, I'll end this segment right here, right now, and call it a day because once you've seen a modern new Samsung running One UI 4.1, you've pretty much seen them all. However, with the Flip 3, it is gratefully the software embellishments that make the flip factor not just about looks, but added practicality as well, like the camera or per app basis functions that I talked about earlier. I do wish Samsung would give me the ability to use the outer screen to do simple things like respond to text or compose simple emails because right now, the whole experience, to me anyway, feels like I'm using a highly simplified Galaxy Watch screen. 
Come on, Samsung, give us something more. So full disclaimer, I bought this mint condition cream colored flip three, thanks in part to my supporters by the way, on Swappa for 500 bucks. And seriously guys, that's pretty much the average price for an unlocked used one of these nowadays. And obviously our special guest, the similar price Pixel 6 is a totally different beast. They're completely two different categories. But I wanted to show you what you can get for $500 nowadays. The Pixel 6 is the smoothest version of Android 12. The AI assistant and features are almost uncanny. The camera is awesome, the battery life. It's really quite a complete package here. That is, we can deal with some of the bugs. The Flip 3 also runs Android 12, has the way superior display, a good camera, more quality of life customizations than the Pixel, and that's not even including the flip experience. From the clever use of the cover screen as a viewfinder, to the ability to use the display at any angle rather than, you know, just flat, perfect for content consumption or video conferencing. Uh, and the fact that I just think this is one of the coolest phones in bloody existence in a long time. So yeah, I know it has bugs, but I don't care. So with all that said, I'm giving the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 a gear up score of 8.4 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. Well, that's it for this review of the Flip 3 and mini comparison with the Pixel 6. I hope you enjoyed it. Please join me the next time when I drop a new video. If you'd like to support, thumbs up. If you like this video and comment nicely down below, subscribe to this channel, get me to 50,000 subs, visit my Patreon page, or if you like to do super things down below, if you like to contribute something, use that button down there. So thank you for watching guys. I love you all very much. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, because guess what? If you haven't seen the news, the world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you. I love y'all very much. God bless. Peace out.